Hello everyone, today we will discuss about Barrett's esophagus. So what is Barrett's esophagus? Before discussing this, we should understand that normal esophagus is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Whereas in the case of Barrett's esophagus, this stratified squamous epithelium is replaced by a columnar epithelium containing the goblet cells. And this uh, change of epithelium is named as metaplasia. Okay, so Barrett's esophagus actually is intestinal metaplasia of the esophageal lining epithelium. Now the reason behind this metaplasia is mainly the chronic esophageal, gastroesophageal reflux disease in which what happens is there is reflux of the acidic contents from the stomach into the esophagus resulting in complications and one of the complications is the Barrett's esophagus. This disease is most common in the white males. Typically, age is around 40 to 60 years of the age. Now, why we need to understand about Barrett's esophagus is because some of the patients uh, having Barrett's esophagus, having showing the features of metaplasia, have shown uh, the increased risk of carcinoma. Okay, so. Uh, now, if this is the squamous epithelium, which is normally present, and this squamous epithelium is replaced by the columnar epithelium, this change is known as metaplasia, we already discussed. Now, further, uh, the changes can take place in the form of dysplasia, and as you know, the dysplasia uh, further leads to carcinoma. So, in case of uh, Barrett's esophagus, uh, there is increased risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma and not only adenocarcinoma, there is increased risk of adenosquamous carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, neuroendocrine carcinoma. And for ruling out the changes of dysplasia and carcinoma, we have to, under, uh, the patient has to undergo routine biopsies. Now, we will understand about the morphology. So, for the morphology, uh, we have this picture here shows the endoscopic endoscopic view. So here we can see there is a pale area and there is a reddish area. So the pale area is the stratified squamous epithelium and the reddish area is the metaplastic epithelium. So in the case of Barrett's esophagus, there are several tongues, there are patches of velvet, red velvety mucosa which extend upward from the gastroesophageal junction and we can see it easily on the endoscopic view and now on the endoscopy the uh, subclassification of the Barrett's esophagus is also done now what is uh, on the basis of subclassification is the length of the esophagus involved it is divided into long segment, short segment and ultra short segment. If 3 cm or more than esophag uh, more length of the esophagus is involved, it is named as long segment. If less than 3 cm is involved, it is named as short segment. However, if less than 1 cm is involved, it is named as ultra short segment. Now for the diagnosis part. So the diagnosis, if we want to do the diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus, we require two things. The first thing is the endoscopic evidence that uh, there is abnormal mucosa present, which we have already discussed. The red patches will be seen. And the second part is the histological documentation that the intestinal metaplasia is present. Now we will go to the second part, uh, seeing the microscopy of the esophagus. So the microscopy of the esophagus, we will see in this case, there are very important cells known as goblet cells. Now in this picture here, we can see these cells. These cells, they contain mucus vacuoles, which give these cells a typical shape of a wine goblet. And because of this shape, they are named as goblet cells. And these cells, they define the intestinal metaplasia and they are must to diagnose the Barrett's esophagus. If the goblet cells are present, the Barrett's esophagus diagnosis can be given. Now this is again a picture here if you can appreciate this is the squamous cell island. This is only the squamous cell island left. However, it is all replaced by the uh, columnar epithelium. Here we can see the goblet cells are also present. Now further, 
this was we have made the diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus. Now the next step uh, in reporting is the uh, dysplasia. We must tell whether the biopsy which we have received is uh, is present uh, is uh, positive for Barrett's esophagus and further if any dysplastic changes are present or not and for that the first uh, category can be negative for dysplasia if we don't find any features of dysplasia so it is negative second is the indefinite for dysplasia in this what happens is we find some changes but these changes are not sufficient for the diagnosis of dysplasia because these changes can be attributable to other other things like uh, inflammation so this this is the second category third category is the positive where, uh, if uh, we find changes of dysplasia so we have to further differentiate whether the low grade dysplasia is present or high grade dysplasia is present so the changes of dysplasia what are they they are in the form of disordered cell cytological features disordered architectural features like we can find the nc ratio is increased there is irregular clumping of the chromatin so these are the features of dysplasia so on the basis of how much uh, uh, dysplastic changes are uh, present it is divided further into low grade and high grade then last is the intramucosal carcinoma so uh, if we find that uh, the dysplastic cells they have penetrated into the basement membrane okay so it is the cancer uh, but now this uh, cell these cells they have not invaded into the muscularis mucosae that means they have yet not entered into submucosa this is known as intramucosal carcinoma and the last will be invasive carcinoma if we find that dysplastic cells they have invaded into the muscularis mucosa and then into the submucosa then it is straightforward that it is a invasive carcinoma so this uh, this was the uh, dysplasia uh, now let's go to the treatment part so the treatment part firstly we have diagnosed using both endoscopy and biopsy and for the biopsy we have to report the dyspla dysplasia features the level of dysplasia must be reported so the initial treatment will only be dependent the treatment will be only dependent upon the reporting so if there is no dysplastic changes present so uh, the treatment will be just in the form of drugs uh, for acid suppression like omeprazole uh, it can go till like laser ablation therapy can be done phototionic therapy can be done but if the dysplastic changes are present we think the patient can uh, land it up into ca cancer then the uh, treatment option like surgical resection in the form of esophagogastroplasty or frontoplication after that they can be done okay so this was all about the Barrett's esophagus please like share and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching this video